Pride and Prejudice, first published in 1813, is the grandmother of rom-coms. It's an English Regency-era comedy of manners by Jane Austen, a tale of first impressions, awkward turtles, witty repartee, and happy endings. For those of you who haven't read the book or seen one of the many, many adaptations, the spoilerific plot rundown, it goeth thusly. Our heroine is Lizzie Bennet, second of five sisters, and our hero is Mr. Darcy. The five Bennet sisters have an overbearing mother obsessed with marriage, a house and estate that will belong to their cousin when their dad dies, and a dad who married for looks and has regretted it every day since. A new fellow named Bingley moves into town and is instantly smitten with Jane, the eldest, nicest Bennet sister, and also the pretty one. He has a friend called Darcy who is not quite so well liked. He says something mean about Lizzie, who is naturally a little bit put out by this. But eventually he falls in love with her because she's witty and kind, though not usually to him. The plot revolves around the lives of the Bennet sisters and their potential matches. There's Mr. Collins, the Ugh. vicar cousin who makes a pass at Lizzie and then refuses to believe him when she turns him down flat. There's the penniless soldier George Wickham who has a mutual hate on with Darcy. Bingley breaks up with Jane under Darcy's instructions. Darcy isn't really convinced that Jane actually likes Bingley, as opposed to she's just marrying him for his money, and also her family are kind of an embarrassment. Yeah. And Lizzie finds out. Darcy confesses his desperate love for Lizzie. In vain I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. She turns him down flat because, hello, you ruined my sister's life and also you're mean to Wickham. Darcy explains all in a letter, in particular why he broke up Jane and Bingley, and also why Wickham is a scumbag. Lizzie is not happy about the Jane and Bingley thing, but is forced to reevaluate her impressions of Wickham. And maybe also Darcy. Eventually, true to form, Wickham runs off with Lizzie's youngest daftest sister Lydia, just like he tried to run off with Darcy's underage sister when he was hanging around with him. Yeah. Anyway, huge scandal would ensue because Lydia is living with a man and they're not married, but Darcy pays him off to save the Bennets from shame and Lizzie is quite humbled. Jane and Bingley get engaged, Lizzie and Darcy hook up, and everybody learns a valuable lesson about first impressions and the importance of getting to know people, yada yada yada. And yes, I've left out a bunch of subplots with Charlotte and Mr. Collins and Lady Catherine and lots of other people, but frankly, the most faithful adaptation of the book is six hours long and I have points to make here, so let's move on. Pride and Prejudice's first impressions are wrong and misunderstandings in Sue plot is pretty much a romantic comedy standard. If you can't think of a particular gimmick or you need something to go with your gimmick, then this is the plot that people tend to fall back on. Some kind of love triangle, misunderstanding, someone who seems perfect but isn't, and someone who doesn't seem perfect but actually is. One of the problems with male leads trying to be Darcy-esque in the modern day is that they misunderstand the fundamentals of his character and also his conflict and why he is so dead set against fancying Lizzie in the first place. The key point for Darcy is that he is not a bad person, because if he were a bad person Lizzie would never agree to marry him. He's rich and he's a bit stuck up and he's very awkward in social situations, especially unfamiliar social situations but he's not a bad person. Meryton is not charmed by Mr. Darcy, but his servants like him, his friends like him, his tenants like him, anyone who's known him for any amount of time likes him, or speaks well of him at least. He's frosty, yes, but he's also competent. Competent is important. Not just to me, but, you know, also to me. He's a good landlord, and he's a good master, and he is not cruel or capricious to the people whose livelihoods and well-being rely entirely on him. So he doesn't, you know, run around the countryside on his white charger going, fwa fwa fwa, damn your eyes, or whatever it is posh people do, I don't know. Darcy is a supremely awkward turtle when it comes to new people. Oh boy, is he awkward. Um, if you are his friend, like Bingley, and you try and force him into interaction with strangers, then he will be downright rude to you because he feels backed into a corner. No, make them go away. Please, I don't want to talk to them. Bingley, by contrast, is a man of large fortune who is also extremely charming, and so Bingley is welcome everywhere because Bingley's manners are impeccable and Bingley is easy company, easy in all social situations. And not everyone is a Bingley. It can be learned, and Darcy does 
try to learn it, and he does make great strides even within the course of the novel, especially after Lizzie basically tells him that he's a total a-hole. But Darcy's social awkwardness is one of the main drivers of the misunderstandings, so to speak. Darcy acts stuck up, Lizzie is prejudiced against him because of this first impression and is thus unable to acknowledge his better qualities. Deep down, he is a decent person who is trying to do the right thing, unlike Wickham, who isn't and isn't. So the modern romantic comedy often has trouble taking all of this on board, which is not really surprising because that's quite a lot and we've only covered Darcy. The ones which do this kind of plot best tend to be either direct or loose adaptations of Pride and Prejudice itself. If they don't do a Pride and Prejudice adaptation, at least consciously, and just do the girl meets boy, girl hates boy misunderstandings and soon then we fall in love sort of plot, the chances that some Darcy and Lizzie-like elements are going to be included goes up. So to do the chances that uh, it's all going to go kind of wrong. Because not only is Darcy a difficult character to translate into a modern context, so is Lizzie. And uh, if you get either of them wrong, it's, it's going to be bad. So we're going to talk about how you can get them right and wrong a little bit more next time, but for now, I think we're out of time.